Location, location, location. A comic shop's survivability is completely dependent upon location. You'd think everybody would understand that, but apparently not. Today we have an example of another comic shop deciding not to carry new weekly comics from the big two. It has everything to do with their location. Today we're going to talk about why that's the case and what the big two needs to watch out for because if they don't get their act together, you're going to see more of the same and it's going to be big trouble for the big two. Let's talk about it. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. Today we're going to talk about location and its impact on the comic shops, the direct market, and how that's sort of negatively impacting what's going on with the big two. The example we have today is a post that I saw on Facebook. We're just going to freeform it a little bit. This is from Panther Comics. They're based in Washington Township, New Jersey. And here's the post that they put out that really caught my attention and I decided to spread it around because I wanted to get some reactions and figure out what people think about it. Here's the quote. We will no longer carry new weekly comics. Unfortunately, I do not feel they work for my business model any longer. I'm a lifelong reader and have been debating this decision for the majority of this year. Instead, I'll be focusing on pressing and cleaning comics as well as buying comic and video game collections. I appreciate your business and encourage you to keep reading weekly like me. Okay, so that's the full quote from Panther Comics, Washington Township, New Jersey. And here's the sort of nuts and bolts of it. First of all, let's talk about why this is happening and how that it relates to just the basic fundamentals of business. We always talk about it on this channel. You have this golden rule of sales and marketing. And it's simply this. You give customers what they already want, emphasis on the word already, where they already are, again, emphasis on the already, and you do it at a fair price. We talked about fair price last week when it comes to um, artists and what they charge and commission rates. But today we're going to focus on that second part, which we don't talk about too much, which is where they already are. This is the crux of how you set yourself up in the market, where you place yourself, where you position yourself, whether it's online or in a physical location. Location is everything. You have to go where the customers are. Customers will never come to you. That's a Hollywood fantasy. The, you build it and they will come. Never works out. That is Hollywood hogwash. It's a fantasy. Never works. But in this case, we're talking about Location. So a comic shop sets up shop somewhere on a main street, on a corner, in a shopping mall, wherever the case may be. They are beholden to the regional population as to what comics buy and sell. Batman doesn't sell the same in every city, in every location where a comic shop is set up. Some locations favor European comics. Some locations favor more Marvel versus DC. Other locations are the other way around, DC more than Marvel. But it all has to do with who is in the surrounding area? What are their tastes? What do they like? What are the factors that affect their buying and purchasing power and how that affects the local shop? So for example, here's some of the, just some of the things that you need to think about when you're setting up a comic shop and, and that it would affect you. Strange as may sound, you, it, a lot of people don't think about this, but geography makes a big deal. If you're out in Montana somewhere where you're surrounded by mountains and it takes you 50 minutes to drive just to get a jug of milk, that's going to play a big difference into whether or not you're going to get a lot of people coming into your shop because they have to really want it because there is a friction point, if you will, where people have to overcome any kind of inconvenience of getting to your shop. They have to love comics more than they love driving, <laughs> as an example, or, or, or more than the comfort of staying home is probably the better way to say it. Geography makes a big deal. Weather makes a big deal. If you are in the northern states or if you're in Canada or whatever else, you know, during those winter months, that snow and that ice and that bad weather really plays a factor. So if you're depending on people to come in every single week, maybe that's not always possible. So you have to gear your store for the physicality of where it's located, what the population will and will not tolerate based upon the factors that affect their daily lives. And that plays a big deal. Now you have the third factor, which isn't the physical tangibles, but it's the one that probably plays the most uh, of a factor into the location, which is culture. People who are living in San Francisco, as an example, are very different than people who live in Brooklyn. That's a very different set of vibes and personalities and cultural norms that we think, oh, we're just all American. N no, 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 no. <laughs> it doesn't work that, that way. If you've ever been into rap music, the East Coast versus West Coast rivalry has been a thing for a very long time. If you are... Um, into country music, you know, you're not going to find a lot of country music lovers in the middle of uh, Staten Island, for example. You're not going to find a lot of 
mellow beach kind of music folks in the middle of Montana. You're not going to find a lot of people who like Texarkana kind of uh, music in, say, for example, Vermont. Culture makes a difference. The locations have their own cultures. And we like to think that we're all Americans. We're all the same. We're not. That is, again, another Hollywood fallacy. People in different regions, they have their own cultures, they have their own personalities, they have their own vibes. So the natural result of that is when you go to a comic shop and you find out what they carry on the shelves, what the local people tend to buy is very much guided by that culture. That's why you have a lot of people, for example, who are in Portland, Oregon, will buy a lot of Tom King stuff. They'll buy a lot of Rom V stuff. They'll buy a lot of stuff from writers particularly who writers who come from that area, because for right, wrong, or different, there are a lot of modern comic writers that whose names you recognize that are from that sort of Portland area. In my opinion, not such a great thing, but okay. You have regional tastes, local tastes, and the comic shop has to cater to those local tastes. Why that makes a difference is if you have a lot of big two writers, let's just pick on Marvel as an example. If you have a lot of big two writers, who are all from a particular region, and let's pick on Portland again, and they all write to appeal to that Portland market because that's who their friends are, that's what their local culture is like, that's how they find storytelling tastes to evolve. Well, if you take that brand and that culture and you infuse it into the comics and then you try to sell it to somebody who lives in Miami, they're not going to, it's not to say they won't get it, it's just to say it won't appeal to them. And so you have comic shops that are in Miami they're trying to sell comics that are really written with a sort of a Portland-esque type of vibe and tone and a personality and a mindset because the writers who wrote them are, I would say, incapable or are unwilling to separate their culture from the characters and the story that they're trying to write. It's not going to appeal. So what's happening is that Miami store now has to kind of shift to say, you're writing comics that my people don't like who are in my region and that's who I have to cater to. So off you go. So that leads to the word pivot. And that's what we have here. The example from Panther Comics is what are they doing? They are pivoting. Now you hear that word a lot. But what does that really mean? It means that they have a business model where maybe they sell 80% new comics, 10% back issues, and another 10% are tchotchkes, things like Funko Pops and gadgets and pins, what have you. That works fine or has worked fine for a while when the big two kind of played on universal themes, when they were appealing to a more uh, global or universal human condition. But when those writers and those editors start, I would say, segmenting themselves into a more local culture based upon where those creators are coming from, instead of focusing on broader themes, now you're writing comics that don't appeal to the local markets in which those comic shops are based. And they have to pivot because those big two comics aren't selling the way they used to. That's kind of where culture really infuses into the comic. And it becomes, I would say, an, I won't say an unsellable product, but it becomes less sellable to a broader market. In some cases, that works fine. So if you have like this Portland market and these Portland types of creators and they're creating comics that really appeal to a Portland crowd, that's going to be fine for other markets that are very similar to Portland which kind of keeps them above board and that's okay. But then you, when you take that to other regions that are very much not in line with that sort of Portland type of mentality, it's not going to work. And those comics are going to start reducing in sales. They're just going to turn readers off in those localities and the local comic shop has to do away with it. When you are a direct market, when you're a local comic shop owner, the tastes of your surrounding area matter the most above anything else. You can't just take big two comics and just sell them. That doesn't work. <laughs> you have to sell what the people want. So when we talk about the golden rule, the second part is where they already are. Well, when you're a physical comic shop, you're sort of stuck. You can't move around. So you have to sell what the local people want. And if the local people don't want what the big two are selling, then you're going to run into some trouble. I mean, it's just natural, normal. You just got to think about that. This example here that we have from Panther Comics is pretty much, you know, I would say, I won't say a common thing, but it's something that I'm seeing more and more comic shops talking about where they don't carry new stuff or they only carry new stuff if somebody puts it on their pull list and they already have a subscription or, or something to that effect. They just won't stock up shelves with new big two comics because they know their local market won't buy it because the Marvel and DC 
editorial teams with their creators have essentially niched themselves into a place where they're writing comics that only appeal to a very small locality in form of culture based upon where the creators are coming from. And that's not a good thing. Now, you're going to see more of this. How is this going to play out? How is this going to play out in the future? You're going to see an increase, I believe. You're going to see an increase in the number of local comic shops that just say, no mas. I'm not going to carry any more stuff from the big two, or if I carry big stuff from the big two, it's only because somebody wants it on their pull list and I order just what they want. And that's it. I'm not going to stock the shelves. I'm not going to carry excesses. I'm not going to buy into big events. I'm not going to pre-plan for uh, extras or anything like that. If somebody wants to order it, I'll order it for them, but that's it. You're going to see an increase, I believe, an increase in that number of number of posts like this one where you have somebody saying, I'm just not going to carry it anymore. I mean, that's you can't continue to stock stuff that people in your area don't want. What is the natural outcome of that scenario? If that increases, and I think it might even accelerate, what it's going to do is it's going to dwindle the major distribution channel for the big two. The big two, Marvel and DC, for physical comics are highly dependent on the direct market. That is their number one source of distribution. So when the direct market dwindles, as far as their willingness to carry big two stuff, that's going to have a direct impact on their bottom line. That's going to force the big two then to pivot. Now, how they pivot, who knows? If they don't pivot and they just let nature take its course, they're going to wind up losing sales and that's going to spell big trouble eventually. You're going to reach a breaking point. It has to happen. The other way you're going to have to pivot if they want to maintain their cash flow and their revenue is they have to pivot into other forms of distribution. That means getting back into the Walmart or the uh, grocery stores or wherever they wind up going. If the direct market, which is your one channel, is going to diminish, you have to compensate with another distribution channel. I don't know what's going to be, but if they don't do something, they're just going to atrophy. And that's just the way, <laughs> that's the way it is. There we are. We have a comic shop. They're telling a very familiar story and I think an increasingly familiar story that they're just not going to carry Big 2 anymore because the Big 2 doesn't sell for where they're located. That's not a fallacy. That is not a, well, dude, you're just selling it wrong. That is a nonsense statement. I've seen a couple of people react that way like, you just have to sell better. You can't sell what people don't want in your area. And there's a reason why people don't want what you want in that area because you, you're creating comics that don't appeal to local tastes and local cultures. That is very much how that this works. The big two are going to create increasingly niche style storytelling. They have to be prepared for an increasingly niche sized market. And that's going to spell trouble for the bottom line. And it's on them to do something about it. But you know what? That's my opinion. It's an op-ed. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. I want to know your opinion about your comic. You know what? This is what I want. Tell me about your comic shop. And if you talk to the owner or the people who manage the store or people who are regularly behind the register, talk to them and, t and ask them, you know, do people who come into the shop on a regular basis, do they favor a particular publisher, a particular genre, a particular character? And is that the same story across the board or do they find that it, it varies from location to location? I bet you it's the latter, but I, I want your confirmation on that. Leave a comment below. Thank you very much for joining. And please stay tuned through the outro for more reviews and videos and opinions just like this one.